Yes. Okay. Yes. You are then teaching. Okay. All right. Okay, cool. Thank you. So today um I want to talk about the UNESCO um heritage sites in Vietnam. Okay, so the first one is the art of pottery making of the sham people. So we have a video to watch. We are not going to watch the whole video, but we are going to watch okay. a part. Yeah. Cham people are an ethnic minority in Vietnam with the population of more than 161,000 people. They keep a treasure of unique cultural heritages such as tower temples, festivals and craft villages. Like Bo Tuk Pottery Village in Ninh Thun Province and Bin Duk Pottery Village in Bin Thun Province, in the southern part of the central region of Vietnam. According to the Cham legend, God Pok Lang Chan had the merit of establishing the village and teaching villagers to make pottery. To commemorate his merit, villagers set up a temple to worship him as a craft ancestor. Every year, villagers go to the temple to worship the craft ancestor. The characteristics of Cham pottery are that it is made by women's hand without pottery wheel, mold, unglaze and fire odors, with the simple pottery tools. Bamboo hoop scrapper polisher, bamboo hoop scrapper, coil cloths, shells, tree sticks, etc. The raw material for making pottery is simple, but it takes a lot of time for preparation. It is the clay taken from the fields about 3 kilometers far from these villages. Pottery clay is taken at the depth of 20-40 centimeters from the ground. The clay is black, slightly grey brown, and wet and has high adhesion. If you want to get the right clay, you must follow the craft secret that is only transmitted among pottery makers themselves. Each potter makes his own knowledge through work. The clay, after being brought home, is dried for 3-4 days so that it no longer contains water. Potters dug a hole, about 50 cm in depth, with diameter of 40 cm, in which two-thirds of it is used to soak the clay. Fresh well water is then used to pour into the hole to soak the clay for 10-12 hours to make it loose, deeply soak and cohesive. In the step of mixing soil, potters mix soaked clay with clean and fine sand with a one-to-one -one ratio. After that, they knead the clay with their feet and their hands until the clay reaches certain plasticity. To create a complete pottery shape, the potter must go through several stages. The first stage is creating the pottery bottom and body. Potters will turn the clay mass into a pumpkin shape and gradually use their hands to create a firm bottom on a flat support. Next, they add a banquet-shaped piece of soil to join and develop the pottery body until it reaches a certain size. In order to delete the markings of the joint sealed with banquet-shaped additive clay on the, pot the body and the mouth of the pottery, potters use a bamboo hook scrapper polisher to scrap the soil and remove the fingerprint. Then they wrap a wheated coil cloth in their hands to scrap so this is the Cham people and they showed us a small video of how they make pots. So have any of you ever seen this in real life? Hmm. Have you seen how the people make their own pots? Oh. Okay. So 
let's read i just want to get everything oh oh no too big too big oh, there you go okay so um pan can you read for us are you there Okay. All right. That is okay. I will read. Okay, so it is inscribed in 2022 on the list of the cultural heritages in need of urgent safeguarding. So, otherwise, the Cham pottery people, everyone will forget them. So, we have to keep it safe. Okay. So Cham pottery products are mainly household utensils, religious objects, and fine artworks, including jars, pots, trays, and vases. They are made by women and viewed as an expression of individual creativity based on knowledge transmitted within the community. Hello, Ju Yan. Did I say your name right? <laughs> Hello. All right, so we are learning about the heritage sites, the cultural heritages that needs safekeeping and safeguarding. So the first one we were looking at was pottery. Okay. So the second thing that we are going to look at is the intangible cultural heritages of humanity where people are dancing. Okay. It is a form of Vietnamese dancing with movements that symbolize human activities in a ritual culture, life and work. Okay, so this is very beautiful. And again, there is a nice video about it that we can see the art of the, the dance of the Thai people in Vietnam. Yeah. Okay. Shui creations are characterized by a Thai cultural identity that converges in the northwestern Vietnamese cultural region, located in the provinces of Sinh La, Tien Bien, Lai Chao, and Yen Bai. This is the ancient land of the Thai people. They have long lived in villages and cultivated wet rice as their main source of living. Thai people have a very rich spiritual life in which Sui dance is considered particularly important. Thai people follow polytheism. They believe that in the surrounding world, there are many supernatural forces that can affect human life. Every year, before planting crops, villagers conduct rituals to thank the gods and pray for support in the new planting year. 
ากนางยุ่งเพ่งพกเพ่งเพื่อนเพ่งเพื่อนเพ่งยาวเจ้าThe Sway dance is performed as a means for people to pay homage to their gods, communicating their deep desires. rất nhiều là cái nghi lễ thứ nhất là cái nghi lễ xiên bản xiên mường xiên hơn xiên dạo trong những cái nghi lễ là phải có điệu xòe để vui mừng những ngày lễ The most popular form of Thai Shui dance is called Shui Bong, Circle Shui Dance, which is accompanied by a lively drum melody. Shui Bong is widely used. Almost every important cultural event has this dance. Hey, so this is the Shui people's dancing, all right? And it is very important to remember this. And to keep this alive, okay? Does anyone want to talk about this? Have you ever been to such a festival before? Yeah. Do you want to share with the class, or do you want to ask questions? Okay. So it is very important for these villagers. To, to have these festivals and to dance, okay? And this is the way that they can honor their gods and pray to their gods, okay? So it's really, really cool. Yes, and it's beautiful. Okay, the next thing on our list was in 2019, okay? And this is the representative's list of the intangible cultural heritages of humanity. All right, and here is a picture of that. People busy with a ritual. And once again, I have a very nice video of the website of UNESCO where they will show us some more. Okay, is there any questions so far? Difficult. No questions. Is it difficult? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, is it difficult to listen to this? Is it too much English? What is difficult? Mm. Too Tommy, much English? It is a difficult tongue. <laughs> okay. Okay. 
So um, what, what would you like to do? Would you like to watch the videos or would you like to talk a little bit? Or what would you like to do? Yeah, okay. Watch the video or talk? Yes. Okay, let's watch the video then. Yes, I want to uh, see video. Okay, I also like the videos. I uh, like it. The first, the first, uh, uh, in the first, I uh, show, uh, I see a um, uh, video, this video, the first. Oh, the first video? Yes. This one? No, 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 no. Uh, call me. Uh, the first, uh, I uh, see. see. Oh, it's yeah. the first time. The first yes. time you see it. Yes, yes. Oh, okay, okay. All right, let's watch. Thank you for me. Okay, yes, of course. The ethnic minority groups of the Tay, Nung and Thai live mostly in the mountainous provinces of northern Vietnam, speaking languages that belong to the Tay Thai language group and earning a living mainly by wet rice cultivation. The three groups share the view that things and humans all have both via or spirit and body. When the spirit departs, the body gets more fragile and in the case of plants or trees, they wither. So the people have to invite 10 masters to perform 10 rituals to conduct worship towards the via. When conducting the ten ritual to worship the via, the host family often asks their relatives and villagers to come for help. Each gives a helping hand in preparing the feasts in the lively atmosphere. At the start of the ritual, the master waves a fan to take the spirit out, then burns incense, which guides the way to the realms of heaven, earth and water to inform on the right and ask the ancestors and deities to provide heavenly generals and troops from above. Ancestors are also asked to help the master bring the offerings to the deities so that the latter allow the spirit to come back to the body of the host. Having the assistance from the heavenly generals and troops, the master orders for the drum rolls and flag waving, with the army strongly advancing, bringing the offerings to the deities. The advancing of that army is depicted by the master in what he is chanting throughout the ritual. He sings that the ten army has to take pains passing various Kom and Kai, Continue. I want to uh, see the first. I feel uh, beautiful and uh, happy, happy. Very okay. Happy. I will uh, continue. First, uh, you are the um, uh, your video uh, teaching for uh, happy, very happy. Okay, wonderful. Okay, let's continue. Deserted lands in the realm of heaven to arrive at the place of Mother Hua and Mother Bo and the two stars of Nam Tao and Bak Do, which decide on the births and deaths of species. And finally, the Jade Emperor 
the supreme and most sacred god monarch who holds the destiny of mankind in his hands. As for the Dragon King, who manages and keeps spirits that have got lost in the realms of waters in custody, the Ten Army has to take extreme pains to come to him. On the way, they have to kill ogres and release fires to burn the water surface and kill the Ma Tuong ghosts to save the Via. While conducting the ritual, the Ten Master practices magic, including having a spirit enter his body, riding a thorny horse, which means trampling on thorns without feeling pain, running over and swallowing flames, and chewing the incense that has been burnt. In addition, he also acts as a talented performing artist in the sacred atmosphere. After the offerings have been given to all of the deities and the host spirit has been found, the master comforts the spirit, advising it to return to the land of the living. The Te, Nung and Tai deem that ten masters are extraordinary persons. Only they can contact deities. That is because they are destined to do the job, and most of them were born into a ten clan. But they are only allowed to do the job after following and learning from a senior master for some years and then attending an initiation ceremony by the master who establishes an altar dedicated to deities and permits them to practice the job. The masters always keep themselves pure and with integrity abiding by the teaching of ancestors. Having warm hearts to help others, they are willing to perform the rituals whenever anyone who has earlier encountered difficulties and bad luck or infertility asks them for help. Thus, ten masters have become the spiritual prop of the ethnic groups throughout history. Right. So, this is this video about these people, okay? All right, what did you think of the video? Did you like the video? Yes. Yes. Okay. So the next thing, the next thing I want to show you is in 2017, yeah. Also, also the cultural heritage of humanity, okay? So it is the diverse art of music, poetry, acting, painting, and literature, okay? By joy games and by joy performance. So again, a video. <laughs> Another video. Do you want to watch another video or do you want to do you want to do is it okay? Okay, all right. If you want, I can send you the videos also so you can also watch them at home. Okay. Trăng tự nghìn xưa đến rằm thì sáng tỏ. Bai Chui is a form of folk entertainment based on a card game. It has a long history in central Vietnam and is popular in the provinces of Quang Binh, 
Quảng Trị, Thứ Thuyên Huế, Đà Nẵng, Quảng Nam, Quảng Ngãi, Bình Định, Phú Yên, and Khánh Hòa. Bài Choi is conducted each year from the second to the fifth day of the first lunar month. Participants sit inside bamboo and thatched huts to play a special game using cards. The head of the organizing committee beats the drum to signal the opening of the event. Then a male or female performer called Hyo takes one bamboo card out of a bamboo tube and sings a verse called Ho Thai. This verse asks participants to guess what card he or she is holding. Participants have to guess the name of the card and check whether they are holding the same card. If a person is holding the same card as the Hyok performer on three occasions, then he or she will win the prize. Gain good luck. The Ho Tai sung verses not only present riddles relating to the names of the cards, they also include profound reflections on social life. People love Bai Choi because of the beautiful singing of the Hio performers. The Hio performers are true artists of the community. After the game, it is customary for wealthy families to invite the artists to perform in the homes for the enjoyment of themselves and their neighbors. Such performances typically take place outside in the courtyards of houses using a rattan mat as the stage. There are important regional differences in the music performed during Bai Choi. Here performers in different regions have distinctive music styles and ways of performing. The music performed during Bai Choi in the provinces of Quang Bing, Quang Chi and Te Tianhui includes folk songs from those regions such as children's lullabies and work songs like Hap Ve, Ho Za Gao and Ho Huan. Rồi bài chưa mà nghe tuổi họ cũng bài họ mới đi chờ này cho cả ngon mà múc ra nước mà hẳn cùng ngon đây ngày qua mẹ nó mà đi chờ cho bố hai con tiên vì sáu lờ ở tiên. The performances of Hiệu singers draw on those folk songs and have some similarities with the context of work songs. Mà anh mà chặt mà cho chi này. Cho to em một cái trọng mà mang đi cho mang về mà cần cái là ba cũng cạn lơ ba. Đây đây cạn ba ba con ơi. Six folk song styles are used to perform Bai Choi in the provinces of Quang Nam, Đà Nẵng, Quảng Ngãi, Bình Định, Phú Yên and Khánh Hòa. These are Xuân Nữ Cổ, Xuân Nữ Mới, Nam Xuân or Cổ Bà. Sang Se Lui, Sang Se Dựng, and Ho Khoa. Dâu con dâu của người ta hiu đệ đầy nôn cái công chuyện làm. Nó biết nó chịu loàn cha mẹ cha thật. Nó biết kinh, biết trọng ông bà. Còn nhưng mà 
ơi đây tao quên tao quên chết 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 trời ơi mẹ ơi. Performers choose melodies to suit the story being told, so the lyrics affect the style of the music performed. Thoại khanh lúc trước nuôi mẹ chồng Biết bao cây bà mẹ chồng Thì quảng nạn làm sao Đến khi mẹ đói Nó lóc thịt sao cho mẹ anh Dâu của người ta Họ điếu để tầng ngành The Corban and Sang Se melodies are joyful and strong and use the notes of the back scale The Swan Nau songs are gentle and soft and use the notes of the Nam scale. Đòi lan châu cực khổ lan thang Gậy thành đạp trôi ba ngàn gần cha Tai giả nghe thì mở hội Each story is associated with a particular melodic structure for the standard poetic meter of a pair of six and eight syllable sentences. When singing different poems, some notes of the melody are changed to suit the linguistic tones of the words, but the overall melodic structure remains the same. Anh tên là gì? Dạ, dạ tôi tên là Hà Ma. Còn anh là tên gì vậy anh? Dạ tôi tên là Lan Châu đó anh nè. À. Anh ơi, ai dạ chui, ai kia gặp nhau. Anh ăn trên tối lại thì còn ma ra thân anh. Instead of singing short, hot high verses like the hip performers do, Artists of the Bai Choi solo performance style of southern central Vietnam sing folk stories such as Lâm Sang Xuân Nương, Thoai Khang Châu Tuân, and Pham Kong Cúc Hoa. In this style, individual performers sing, tell stories, and play the roles of all the characters in the story. They reveal... Hey, so in this piece of culture, the people sing stories. And I think it is very beautiful, right? Yes. Have Have you ever seen such a performance mm. in your life? Have you ever seen something like this? Yes. Okay. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. And I think the last one for today is the representative list of the cultural heritages of humanity okay all right so this is also singing and dancing and drumming and clapper beating okay it is worshipped or linked to the worship of the home kings a belief rooted in the ancestor worship practice of the viet people okay so here is a picture of that Okay, and then the last video for today yes. is the singing of the food to people of Vietnam. Okay, is there any questions? Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful, okay. On the first day of the Lunar New Year, the An Thuai Swan Guild, one of four traditional Swan Guilds of Phu Tha province, bring offerings to Kham Temple to honor and revere the Hung Kings. The people of Phu Tha also believe that it was the Hung Kings who first taught the local people to sing and dance the special form of music known as Swan. The melody known as Inviting the Kings is performed by the senior Swan artists as a ritual of supplication, appealing to the Hung Kings to travel from Kam Temple to the village's communal house to watch the villagers sing and dance Swan in celebration of the new year.
Starting on the second day of the Lunar New Year, every Swan Guild becomes active in festival performances. Early spring is the most important time of the year for swan performance. A full swan performance cycle has three phases. The first one is honoring the kings, Hatta, with songs that praise the virtues of the home kings and the village guardian deities. After the Hatta Frek phase comes the second phase, which takes the form of invocations for good health and good fortune, Hat Nilei, with 14 songs praising nature, humankind, and the daily life of the community. The last phase is the festive songs, Hat Hoi, featuring the famous boy-girl courtship exchanges, Hat Zauzwin, expressive of love and yearning through romantic melodies, performed as love duets between the boys and girls of the village and the young men and girls of the Swan Hills. With a wonderful mix of the solemn and the joyful, Swan festivals are always keenly appreciated by the whole community, including both young and old. Làng tôi là cái hội hát xoan từ đời xưa đến giờ rồi. Nếu hôm nào tôi mệt tôi cũng đi tiếp lắm. Đêm nào mà tôi vẫn hát, nó tôi vẫn có cái quyển sách mà tôi vẫn dở ra tôi vẫn hát. Thế thì trẻ nó cứ bảo cái bà con ngủ bà hát cả đêm mà kệ tôi bao giờ chết thì tôi còn tôi cũng bỏ. After singing at the communal house of their home villages at the time of the New Year Tet holiday, the Swan Guilds often travel to other neighboring communities where the Hung Kings are venerated to take part in convivial cultural exchanges. On the fifth or sixth day of the Tet holiday, Khao Mai villagers welcome the Antwai Swan Guild at their communal house. Antai Swan Guild and Khao Mai village have had an age-old tradition of exchanging and twinning relationships dating back over many centuries. The Antai Swan Guild always perform both the devotional singing and the invocation phases inside the communal house. The final phase of the boy-girl courtship exchange takes place outdoors in the temple courtyard where all the villagers can see and appreciate the performance. In the past, the entire performance cycle was practiced inside, but nowadays the final phase takes place outdoors so that everyone can come to enjoy and participate. tradition of exchange and friendship bonding constitutes a long-standing and sustainable basis of understanding and amity among the region's communities. The keepers of the intangible cultural heritage of Swan singing comprise the 249 members of the four Swan guilds of Phu Tho province. They include the Antai Guild in Phuong Lao Commune, the Kim Dai Guild, the Phu Duc Guild, and the Tet Guild of Kim Duc Commune, all located in Viet Chi City. The practitioners of Swan singing are mostly farming people. The majority are female and include both young villagers and also workers, retired people, teachers and students. The membership of each Swan Guild ranges from around 30 to 100 members. The leader of each group is called the Chum. The Chum role is usually hereditary. In the past, only men could be Chum, but nowadays there are also women guild leaders. Và điệu múa các cách thức thì cũng có khác nhau. 
The content of swan singing consists of 31 songs, each with a different form of both singing and dancing. The practitioners have to master the skills of singing, dancing, drumming and beating of clappers to perform each song. Apart from the Tate holiday period, Swan Guild leaders gather their members on a regular basis to practice their art. The leaders are those who have not only mastered all the songs and are experienced in the organization of teaching and transmitting their skills, but also have the ability to transmit their love and passion for Swan singing to other community members who want to learn. Tôi cảm thấy là rất là yêu, vì yêu nên tôi đã tìm hiểu rất là cạn kẽ và tôi đã quyết định là gì không thể giữ cho riêng mình mà phải giữ cho toàn xã hội. In Futa province, there are more and more swan singing clubs. Members vary in ages and social background, but they all share a common passion for swan singing. Are you okay? I see that you are crying. Are you okay? <laughs> Should I stop the video? <laughs> no, no, uh, you are continue to uh, have the... <laughs> oh, happy tears. Okay. <laughs> okay. Please don't be sad. Don't be sad. I uh, love uh, my country. I uh, feel um, happy. Mm. Oh. No question. As you watch uh, videos. As yes. You, uh, oh, I am so happy to hear. Okay. But you must not be sad. <laughs> Don't be sad, okay? Am mê và nhiệt tình tập luyện là ngày đêm. Không kể là nắng mưa và rét mướt. Swan is also integrated into music courses for students in many schools in the province. Music teachers and students warmly welcome it. Qua thực tế giảng dạy, không những các em học sinh được học trong lớp mà các em còn được học các bài hát xoan qua các hoạt động tập thể. Tôi nhận thấy các em học sinh rất là yêu thích các làn điệu hát xoan. Con rất thích hát xoan và hãnh diện khi được đứng biểu chia diễn trước nhiều mọi người và con mong muốn con sẽ được đi nhiều nơi để biểu diễn những làn điệu hát xoan của quê hương mình. Many families in Futa province are heirs to an age-old tradition of practicing swan singing dating back over many generations. From the young to the old, each has the same passion for the art. The family of Mr. Nguyen Swan Hoi, the chief guardian of Lai Len Temple, is one such example. Gia chúng tôi đến nay là đã năm đầy hát xoan gia đình tôi là có hai mươi đứa cháu nội và bốn đứa chắc mạng thì, thì có những cháu trong gia đình chúng tôi nó chưa đi học chưa biết chữ mà rất là ham thích xoan tuy cho nó mộc mạc nhưng nó rất linh thiêng và chúng tôi hát ở các cửa đình nhưng không những hát ở cửa đình cửa miếu mà chúng tôi còn dạy các con các cháu hát ở ở nhà để cho nó gìn giữ mãi mãi về sau này since the recognition of swan singing by UNESCO in the list of intangible cultural heritage in need of urgent safeguarding, Futa province, especially the four swan guilds, have forged a wide range of plans and activities to preserve and promote swan singing. The leaders, Trum, of each swan guild gather in meetings and seminars to study and develop plans to safeguard swan singing. They and their communities continue to play a key role in finding methods to teach swan singing so that it retains its artistic qualities yet is also well adapted to the modern way of life while maintaining the unique characteristics of the singing and performing style of each individual guild. Hát xoan thật sự đã đi vào lòng người từ đứa trẻ 3 tuổi cũng đã bập bẹ biết hát xoan bởi vậy nên chúng tôi sẵn sàng gìn giữ và phát triển. Okay, so that is the swan singing. Sorry, let me just get out of this. Okay, uh, let's see. All right. 
And this is the last one for today. Um, also very spiritual and everyday wishes to gain and help achieving good health and success in Vietnam. Worship the mother goddess of the three realms, heaven, water, and mountain, and forests. Okay. So here is a picture. And then here is a video. Okay, but I don't think we will finish everything now. Maybe we can finish it next week. <laughs> The guardians of beliefs in the mother goddesses of three realms are mostly rice farmers and in northern, north central and southern parts of Vietnam. Beliefs in the mother goddesses of three realms have developed around the worship of the female spirits. From the 16th century until today, the beliefs have become a cultural belief activity that has profoundly influenced the social life and consciousness of a wide range of people. The supreme spirit for followers of beliefs in the mother goddesses of three realms is Liu Han. She was a spirit who descended to earth in the form of a maiden and became a Buddhist nun. Many palaces and temples have been built in honor of her myth, such as Zhe Palace, Tai Ho Palace, Song Temple, Bak Le Temple, in Lang Son. She is honored as one of the four immortal spirits of the Vietnamese people. Over time, together with Liu Han Mother Goddess, people worship other Mother Goddesses of Heaven, Water, and Forest Realms in the so-called Pantheon of Three Realms, as well as many other historical and cultural figures who have contributed greatly to the country. Nam Dinh Province is regarded as one of the key worshipping centers dedicated to Liu Han Mother Goddess. People in the Lei and Nguyen dynasties marked that area as the place to which she descended. Currently, in Nam Dinh province, there are nearly 400 temples dedicated to worshipping the mother goddesses. Annually, at Zhe Palace in Vu Ban district, from the 3rd to the 10th of the 3rd lunar month, a traditional festival is held to commemorate Liu Han mother goddess, in which there are special folk performances, rituals, and ceremonies, as well as the procession of the Buddhist scripture and word puzzles among many activities attended by tens of thousands. It is called the Mother Death Anniversary. At the temples dedicated to Liu Han Mother Goddess, the daily worship is attended to by temple guardians. The most important practice is the spirit possession ritual. It is performed by the spirit mediums, singers of the songs for the spirits, and medium's assistants in front of the altar dedicated to the mother goddesses. Each spirit possession ritual is prepared meticulously. To open the ceremony, a priest performs the invocation ritual to petition the mother goddesses and other spirits for the spirit medium ritual.
Unfortunately, we can't finish that last video, okay? But there is lots more. I just want to show you on this website. There is lots more, okay? We aren't even halfway, okay? So there are lots and lots of wonderful information and beautiful videos that we can watch. All right, is there any questions? No questions. Okay, I want to thank you. Yes, you can say. Yes, I'm uh, so happy. Thank you so much. Uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure. It is only a pleasure. And I will see you again next week. Okay. Yes. Goodbye. Bye.